Persona! Persona 5, the game that blew everyone away, appealing to the usual Persona fans, somewhat pleasing those hardcore Mega 10 kiddos, and bringing in tons of newcomers to the franchise. People who have never played a Persona game before now know that they should go to bed when their cat tells them to. Wow! So Persona 5 was released in 2017 and absolutely destroyed every single top 10 list in a way that most of them never saw coming. It is a JRPG that mixes Japanese high school life, where you pretend to be an attractive dude with glasses, with dungeon crawling in huge palaces, destroying hundreds of demons, and stealing some petty cash. The game has so much crammed into its 70 hour playtime, and of course that means there's tons of moments for the fandom to latch on to. Alrighty, so time to bring out the old time machine as we take a look at the fandom during Persona 5's lengthy development. The game was announced all the way back in 2013, which got a huge reaction from fans who were craving the next big game after Persona 4, The Journey of Swag Yu and his harem. But fate had other <laughs> plans. Instead of this game getting released in 2014 for the PlayStation 3, it got delayed again. And again and again and again. <laughs> and so the extremely long waiting game began. First, we needed a name for our protagonist. Well, we could call him... Oh, okay, uh, yeah, it's creative, okay, yeah. Well, now we know how he looks like, so maybe we can come up with a better way to describe... You sicken me. And then the images and gameplay came out, each bringing with them new information for the fans to analyze for some lengthy theorizing and discussion. Or people could just data mine the Japanese game and find out who the traitor is. But then, what if someone were to post an image of not one, but two traitors? Well... <laughs> And with those leaks, people also found the Get Smoked Kid. And naturally, every character would get the same treatment. Would this behavior by fans end after the game was released? Nope. Then the game gets announced for Valentine's Day 2017. You're going to steal my heart? Oh you, you're such a flirt. I can't wait to spend my lonely single life all day playing. This is just like all of my dates! So finally, in early April 2017, it released in the West. And with absolutely no day one updates, the game started up and people were eerily silent for a month. Why is Billy quiet upstairs in his room? He better not be watching that cartoon naughty stuff again. Little did they realize, Billy was fast asleep after his cat yelled at him. The first popular meme to come from the game, and one that managed to define how everyone viewed it, was your cat Morgana telling you to go to bed instead of doing fun things at night. The game that has so many things to do with a time limit on the calendar, and this adorable cat is instead telling you to go to bed. I just want my burgers, gosh darn it! I wanna stay up, and I wanna play video games, and I wanna... yourselves with knowledge. Extra, extra. Hmm. So one reoccurring part of the game is the 
fan site where fans of the Phantom Thieves answer questions whether they support what the group is doing at the time. Naturally, this seemed very realistic to how people in the real world acted, so a real fan site was created, complete with its own questions. The fans wouldn't stop there, however, even making their own UI for phones to mimic the stylish ones found in the game. So even now, you too can pretend to be a phantom thief. But only if you had some real friends to actually text you. Wait, what's this? Our Atlas villains for restricting gameplay spoilers up till 7-7. So for whatever reason, when the game came out, Atlas USA stated that no one could upload or stream past the in-game date of 7th of July or risk copyright takedown. This of course annoyed everyone in the fandom, as nearly every single video released, every tutorial on the game for new fans suspiciously would not show anything past this date out of fear of copyright. They did, however, ease off after a bit, pushing the date back to 19th of November, and now seemingly have backed off entirely at the time of this video's upload. But you know what? I'm actually curious. What lies beyond the 19th of November? There must be some super magical thing there if they didn't want people to spoil it. You know what? Let's check it out. Oh, it's just pancakes. Wait, what? So the biggest spoiler to come out from the game is that Goro Akechi is the traitor in the group. Well, I mean, it's pretty obvious it was gonna be him. But fans went absolutely nuts over how the group exposed him. Pancakes! Yes, Akechi overhearing those words by the group caused his downfall. And naturally, this was memed to death by the fans. Also, this might have caused Akechi to gain a huge fan base, even though he killed a ton of people. Really, calm down for breakfast. We made your favorite food. Pancakes. Sure, Dad, I'll come right down. You never see it come down. for arguably the biggest meme for the fans to latch onto, with hundreds of images and videos made from it, is the you never see it coming meme. Playing on the stylish interface of the gameplay, coupled with the catchy song, one video spawned it all, with now tons of people trying their hands at it, making it get so popular that it pretty much has died out now after the game's release. Boy, I sure bet no one could have seen that coming, eh? <laughs> so, Ryuji is a good boy. He's a precious boy. Yet he curses a lot. However, there does seem to be one word missing from his vocabulary. And this, of course, started fans to rain down with petitions and calls for him to say the F word. As silly as it sounds. But then again, did everyone actually forget this? He actually does say the F word. What? You don't remember? Okay, here, I'll play it for you. For real? What? Oh, you're thinking. Maybe that would have been a good time to include those Danyan romper cut-ins I've done in the past two videos. Sorry, I'm not that predictable. For real? For real? For real? Are you for real? For real? Oh boy. Now here's an early one that popped up from fans during the release of the game. After it was found out that you could actually name your team to anything you wanted, they got creative and made a few interesting choice ones. This then paired up with Akechi talking specifically about the team, made picking a name one of the most difficult decisions in the game. 
Now comes the trinity of exploitable images made by the fans. You have Makoto's browser history, which stemmed from her trying to hack her sister's laptop all sneakily like, making it look like she was browsing for something she clearly shouldn't have. The other is Yusuke showing off his amazing art, and asking you for an honest opinion. Fans were then quick to give him the most valid form of criticism, memeing it to no end. And the final part to the exploitable trilogy is Haru's forehead. Yes, the meme is big enough for it. I mean, have you seen the size of it? You shouldn't annoy a girl with an axe! So the final boss of this extremely long game, with tons of themes and emotions, is just some buff, bald dude. Oh, my eyes! I don't like liars. Damn rat! I'll sue! <laughs> Nano machine, son. Rebels who dare defy my rule. You shall perish. So, with the release of the newest Sonic game, Sega decided to announce promotional DLC for the OC character to make him a Phantom Thief. And boy, did the fans love this. Actually, not really. They didn't really like it. Well, thankfully, that was the only Persona-related Sonic material that would ever get released. I don't think my heart could take it if they... As with the other popular Persona game, the fifth one also got its own dancing spin-off. And then down the line there will most likely be a fighting game, and probably a racing game, I don't know. And this always splits the fandom down the middle. Half of them hate how Atlas milks the series to no end, and the other... Look at them, they're so precious! <laughs> Except there is one thing the game did that caused even more strife in the fandom, the name. So in the game, you get to name yourself whatever you want, but some people do like knowing what a supposed canon name would be for the main character. For, I don't know, gay reasons? Now the manga was released around this time, and the MC's name was... Some Japanese name. But then the dancing game rocks up and goes... Mate, no, his name is actually... Some other Japanese name. This of course annoyed everyone, as people people got so used to his name as Akira, and not Ren. Or you can be like me and just call him Joker and be safe either way. But all hope for the fans seemed lost now as the anime came through and said, Hey everyone, his name is actually Ren Mamma Mia-san. Speaking of which... <gasps> As is the norm with Persona, the fifth game has an anime. And it's really cool to see all of your favourite characters running around in animated form. But on the other hand, A1 Pictures. What can I say, it's uninspired. Look at this dude. What do you mean it's uninspired? The show is amazing. It gave us this. Ah, ships. Glorious at sea, turmoil on the web. So as you play as an insert male protagonist, you get a lot of options to ship yourself with someone. And I mean the game does actually have this feature, allowing you to go on dates with one person. Polygamy. Oh yes, that. You can date more than one female. Which then brings in the shipping from fans, as each person has to ship him with some one. You got the canonish one, the sibling undertone one, the sibling undertone one. I mean, have you seen how similar they look like? The ones which pretty much confirm you're an adult playing the game and you don't have time for high school romance. The one ship where if you're a fan of it, 
Atlas is legally allowed to delete your save file. And a catchy and his love for justice. I mean pancakes. But of course in the game, you can only date females. And given how many precious guys there are to pick from, you get a lot of gay ships. I mean come on Atlas, let us be gay. There are hundreds of gays in the world. Statistically, 100% of people are gay, and your game does not let us be gay. <laughs> Well, what do you know? The fans made it gay. Isn't that great? So there's this feature that happens in the game quite a bit, and it's in relation to the confidants. People the main character meets and interacts with giving him buffs in the dungeons. But anytime you meet a new person, this attractive looking prosecutor interrogates the heck out of you because she wants to know. How are your teeth so white? You must have had an inside man providing you with free toothpaste. Tell me who it is or you're going to jail for a long time. Well, before you do that, uh, you might want to mention, uh, Mr. Protagonist, that you may or may not have, uh, done some after-school studying with her sister. You what?! Ah, uh, yes, finally, the Persona 5 YouTube fans. Where people make tons of their own fan content, ranging from mods, to animation, to theories, and of course, to memes. You never see it and that's all I can fit on the Persona 5 fandom in this very short video. The fandom is a pretty cool bunch, having an endless amount of creativity, all stemming from this game with some pretty dudes and pretty gals. I rate this fandom a pancake out of pancakes. 10. Now of course there won't be any end to the fandom soon, as Atlas will keep them quenched with all the milking they will keep heaping onto this poor boy's head. Yes, mm. are you ready? What? Nah, nah, nah. <laughs>